So again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And welcome to uh, Hyperledger India Chapters hosted event. So today, uh, it's our honor to welcome two of our esteemed guests from Hyperledger Foundation. First off, we have uh, Daniela, who is Executive Director of Hyperledger Foundation. And she's also General uh, Manager for Blockchain and and um, it's 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 a huge title, so I'm going to cut short <laughs> <Yes>. over there. <laughs> yes, blockchain, and, healthcare, and identity. That's right. You heard it. And <laughs> then we have Julian. I, I guess we are all familiar with him. Like um, he's always there for us in supporting in any event or any kind of initiative that we bring up and. Of course, as you know, Julian is VP of Hyperledger, and also um, he leads uh, some other Linux Foundation activities within Asia Pacific, including uh, the public health, right? Um, Correct, LFPH. LFPH. So yeah, and now we'll now the stage is set for uh, Daniela to take over from here, and it's our honor to hear from you, Daniela. Over to you. Well, Arun, thank you so much for inviting me and congratulations to everybody on the celebration. So I have a couple of slides to take everybody through if I can just figure out how to share this. Okay. All right. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes. All right, excellent. Well, once again, congratulations uh, the, on your third year anniversary for the India chapter. It has been fantastic to see uh, from my view over the last three years, how the India community has grown, um, how you've also taken on leadership um, opportunities. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that with the TSC um, and really the amount of community work that I see on a day in day out uh, basis from the Indian chapter is really unmatched around the world. So congratulations to everyone. Um, and I'm very happy to be here and celebrating uh, with you today. Um, so um, I, I, I put together a couple of slides. There's been a lot of changes. It is my honor to be executive director of the Hyperledger Foundation. For those of you who don't know me, I've been here at Hyperledger for the last four years, a little bit over four years, uh, working with Brian Bellendorf um, as the vice president of Worldwide Alliances, working with our member community and the rest of our ecosystem team and our community architects. And of course, Julian Gordon and the rest of the Asia Pacific team who have just been fantastic as the region continues to grow in India, in China, and in other parts of Asia. So it is just my honor to be here today. And I want to just congratulate everybody once again for um, all the work that the India chapter has delivered um, and more importantly has succeeded in. So congratulations. Uh, it is a new era. It's a new, you know, Hyperledger uh, is a uh, celebrating our sixth year anniversary uh, coming up this at the this December. And um, there's been a lot of changes, you know, beyond me taking on as executive director, our community continues to grow. Um, and we've really become a diverse ecosystem of uh, special interest groups of different regional sectors, um, and obviously of different technology projects uh, and use cases. So as we think about as you know, we, we surveyed um, our, our membership, we surveyed people outside of our membership around what Hyperledger means and what Hyperledger means now and into, into the future in regards to enterprise blockchain. Um, we really got a great feedback about that um, the, the, the name Hyperledger was a bit confusing. People didn't understand, is Hyperledger a project? Is it a technical project? Is it is a community? Is it, what, what exactly is it? So one of the things we, we did is um, once again, we surveyed our members and we surveyed the community um, to understand what would help to have a clear line between Hyperledger as an organization um, and the individual projects. So the different projects here, um, as well as the different community uh, sectors, whether it's the regional 
chapters like the Indian Regional Chapter or the special interest groups, the public sector interest group, the climate action special interest group, how would could we define ourselves as a community? Um, and over the years, you know, many people thought we were the Hyperledger Foundation under the Linux Foundation, um, but we weren't. We were the Hyperledger Project. And within the Hyperledger Project, we had many projects and many SIGs. Um, but we just renamed ourselves to Hyperledger Foundation and I think it's going to really help uh, bring forward Hyperledger and the communities that are built around Hyperledger um, in, for, uh, in our future. So I'm really excited for those of you who haven't perhaps read about it or have seen it. Uh, we are now the Hyperledger Foundation. Um, and there's a lot of materials that we've put together and also published out. Let me see if there's a chat. Uh... Okay, sorry. So Julie, Julian's chat was not to me. So there's a lot of um, uh, materials that we put out. There was a blog post that we posted on why we did the name change and why the focus on building a foundation, a foundation, once again, of communities, a foundation of technical projects, a foundation of regional communities like the Indian chapter, et cetera. So uh, we did uh, publish a Hyperledger Foundation paper. Uh, and this is an overview of what Hyperledger Foundation is. It is for both business and technical um, audiences. Um, and it's a great, um, I think, document. It's simple and easy to read um, if you want to share with your employees or others that are curious about what Hyperledger is. Um, it defines on why, why we exist and what we do. Um, focuses on why enterprise blockchain, which you know continues to be an important uh, definition and thing that we need to uh, educate the market on. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, it outlines the Hyperledger technologies, the DLTs, the, the uh, tools, the libraries, um, and it also shows Hyperledger in action where we break out based on use cases where um, the technology is being applied. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it's on the hyperledger.org site. If you just go to the about, you can download that white paper and we would love uh, feedback uh, from you all about that. So, you know, as we thought about the name of the foundation, it was also time to, you know, pretend, you know to update our mission. Um, so for about six months, um, there was a task force. This was a community task force uh, that uh, consisted of different community members um, that were evaluating the original Hyperledger white paper. Um, that task force also came up with um, a suggestions for the name to change to Hyperledger Foundation um, and also had input on that foundation foundation white paper, um, paper that I just reviewed. So a couple of th key things that we thought was important to update in the mission um, as the Hyperledger Foundation and community continues to grow. Uh, one was to really you know, put into our mission that we are the premier community of software developers. Um, the language in the previous mission was not as strong, but we can claim to be the premier community of software developers building um, these open source software tools. Um, and we wanted to make sure that was clear. We also expanded and the, the uh, scope to include multi-party systems using blockchain, distributed ledger, and related technologies. This is important as the different projects um, within the Hyperledger Foundation continue to grow, where we have DLTs, we have libraries and tools, and this allows us more room for different types of projects potentially in the future um, that are related. Daniela, look good. Um, I guess there is some technical uh, difficulties. Right, Dan Daniela, I'm on mute. <laughs> I think we lost Daniela. So everybody, if you want questions, I think she'll be back in a second. I imagine she's just had a uh, uh, had had a had, had a break there, right? Um, I don't, I don't know. Questions. Sorry, my Wi-Fi broke. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> you need a distributed Wi-Fi system. Exactly. Well, they're working on it. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I'll complain to my in-laws. Um, so yeah. So let's let's continue on. 
Um, the hyperledger momentum, for those of you who haven't seen this slide, this is a standard slide. Uh, we use this in all our mid-year and quarterly updates that we do for the community as well. And many of the presentations that myself and Julian and others um, on staff use, um, we're really trying to you know, benchmark year over year how the growth of our community. Uh, once again, it's six years since we've launched. So um, uh, ha half, half of the Indian chapter is uh, three years old and we're six years old. Um, um, the amount of libraries and tools and distributed ledgers, um, the different graduated projects um, that we now have with, you know, version 1.0 and above, um, obviously some of the projects like Hyperledger Fabric that have um, uh, TLS uh, releases. So really advancing uh, the projects in the community as, as a whole. Uh, we continue to grow from a global membership. Um, we just had some new announcements of new members with companies like Siemens and others like ID now um, and Esperio blockchain, uh, a, a services firm in Europe. So we continue to grow uh, both at the members and obviously in the regional communities, uh, the working groups, the special interest groups, um, and the meetups. One of the things even during the, the, the pandemic period was really our virtual communities continue to grow um, and really just produce some great content um, and some great opportunities uh, for people regionally. So um, we're very happy with that, um, and we continue to be very supportive of those growths. Um, our project landscape, for those of you who have not seen the new landscape view, uh, we're now identifying graduated hyperledger projects and incubating projects. Um, we're happy to come in, and I'm sure Arun uh, would be happy to do uh, an overview of what that means as a project. Um, and there's some great conversations going on right now in the Technical Steering Committee about how else to define these projects, how to make it easy for someone who's coming into the community new uh, to be able to select which projects they should explore um, and they should be using. So lots of great work that uh, the TSC, um, along with staff, um, I think we'll be working on over the next few months. Another place that I think is fantastic um, that I'd like to highlight is our labs. Um, so when we re, uh, launched our labs, um, we knew it was a place to allow people to innovate and experiment. Um, and it's been fantastic to see the type of code uh, code contributions that have coming into the labs. Uh, today, we have over 50 different labs, all at different stages. You know, some are pretty active, some are a little bit more dormant, uh, but really it's a place for uh, any of you who have code that wants to bring into uh, Hyperledger that you want to build a community around uh, to do so. Um, so if you haven't, please do take a look at the labs um, and you know, perhaps in the future we can do a, a session very specific to the labs that are happening within Hyperledger because it is a source of innovation and experiment in our communities. So let's talk a little about adoption and use cases. Uh, we continue to see a growth in the enterprise blockchain um, use cases. Um, a 2021 Deloitte uh, survey um, basically said that 81% of the respondents, this was about 1,200 senior executives and practitioners that they surveyed. So 81% agree that blockchain technology is scalable and has achieved mainstream adoption. Um, so what that means is that the technology is there and these senior executives know the technology is, uh, is available and working um, and that they believe that they see mainstream adoption uh, across their organizations, which is great to see. We also did a Hyperledger brand survey um, in the end of the summer. So we released this to our members in September and I'll share a couple of slides with you. There's some additional information that we will be making public. Um, and we asked, um, there was about 200 respondents, uh, both business and technical leaders on where do they see business blockchain technology going over the next two years? Um, and basically, you know, 87% of the respondents said they see it growing rapidly or moderately, which is um, um, a, a fantastic number to see. 52% of those said that it was growing rapidly, so very quickly within their organization and their ecosystems, and 35% growing moderately. So that's pretty impressive numbers um, if you think about um, kind of the, 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 the growth that we continue to see um, on these use cases, and we'll talk a bit about that. Another key thing that our brand survey found is 
that respondents, so these same 200 executives uh, in both business and technical, the survey respondents view open source as the most appealing enterprise blockchain attribute. And that is just a, a, a fantastic stat because that's what we're here for. That is what the Hyperledger Foundation does, is creating open source enterprise blockchain um, um, projects. And this is important because we continue to see government agencies, for example, talking about how they are making selections and some of the big implementations with open source. Um, so that's the survey really validated um, a lot of the work that Hyperledger has been doing over the last six years to make open source the most appealing enterprise blockchain attribute. There's been a lot of uh, market education um, and we're starting to see you know, RFPs and different things that basically say open source um, and Hyperledger is required. A couple other things that I want to highlight is when we surveyed our the the, the surveys, uh, we talked about what what is the best categorization of blockchain application. What what is being developed and deployed within their own organization, um, and the three top uh, blockchain application categories were financial services, supply chain, and identity followed by education or research, government and legal, healthcare, and uh, as others, as you see there on the slide. Um, and this aligns very closely to what we here at Hyperledger see as part of the case studies, for examples, that we publish and where our members are deploying and bringing solutions to market. So it was great to, to validate that as well. So some of the key areas um, are obviously aligned very closely with where we see the growth of Hyperledger technology. Uh, so in payments and finance, and these are just some examples, I'm not gonna go through them all with you. Um, and we'll make these slides available for you after the fact. Um, obviously the Bank of Cambodia's Project Bakan, uh, which now has recorded over 1.4 million transactions just in the first half of 2021. And that is a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, retail uh, um, uh, digital currency bill with Hyperledger Eroja. Um, there is multiple CBDC projects that are using Hyperledger Fabric as well as Hyperledger Base. And I have a slide next to show. But we're also seeing continued adoption um, and uh, production networks reporting on real data, right? Real production data um, from uh, the likes of GSBN which is the Global Shipping Business Network, um, Trade Lens, right? They are now recording, uh, they say they've tracked over 42 million container shipments and 2.2 billion events. I love talking billions, um, but you know, this is real, this is real transactions, real systems um, that are in production with Hyperledger technology in the case of Trade Lens and WeTrade um, and GSBN, um, all three of them are with Hyperledger fabric. So we continue seeing, um, and more importantly, we're starting to see those numbers of ROI, efficiency gains, um, et cetera. So on the CBDC front, um, and we're happy to talk a little bit about it, we continue to see Hyperledger very much in the forefront of all the central bank uh, projects that we see out there. So these are just some examples, um, and this includes Fabric and Bezu, and obviously Project Bacan with Hyperledger Eroja. Um, and I think we'll see more. We'll definitely see more. We've been talking to the central banks, the Bank of England, the uh, Monetary Authority of Singapore, um, and we they just announced um, yesterday, right? Um, the, the finalists, and we do have a Hyperledger finalist in there. Um, and it's just fantastic to see the continued uh, view of central bank digital currencies looking to Hyperledger first. Um, once again, back to that open source first, um, collaboration, uh, regional uh, um, access, um, and a commercial ecosystem. They know that there's a commercial ecosystem of vendors to support these implementations um, around Fabric, around Bezu, and around Iro as well. So another key area of growth that we're seeing, obviously, is Providence and supply chain. Um, and uh, we continue seeing some great um, data points from Circular, from Walmart. Um, this Tencent um, uh, application is reporting 50% reduction in warehouse documenting um, and use cases around pharmaceutical uh, supply chain. Um, we continue to invest in making sure that supply chain and Providence and sustainability use cases are, um, are, are, are shared throughout the community. 
Um, last one that I had on the list is identity. Um, identity not only continues to be important, um, is being targeted in Europe, um, in Canada. Many major initiatives that are government driven um, have identity and self sovereign identity as a core to what they need to do. Um, and this is important um, in things like ID Union in, in Europe, out of Germany, um, and where they're creating basically production level infrastructure using Hyperledger Indy uh, to create. Um, verification of identity in finance, manufacturing, public sector, and healthcare. Um, IATA is using Hyperledger Indian Aries to do their um, COVID credentialing for travelers. So lots of great work that's happening and continues to work in the Hyperledger Indy Aries, as well as Hyperledger Fabric. There's some great identity use cases as well that we can attest um, to, to Fabric. Um, our members continue to help us tell that story. Uh, we are on track to publish 10 uh, case studies. Um, we just published one by Tech Mahindra around a very cool uh, use case around uh, digital transformation for Abu Dhabi's land registry using Hyperledger Fabric. Just this week, we published another case study with SMP Global and Splunk around their use cases. Um, please do take a look at it. These are great ways to tell others in the community, to tell your customers, to tell your partners um, how Hyperledger is being used. Um, and we welcome any Anybody who's a Hyperledger member um, to contribute those member case studies as well. It's not just our members, our blockchain showcase, which anyone can contribute to, um, now has over 100 showcase listings across many projects and use cases. Uh, so please do take a look at it. Uh, and if you have a case study, a, a, your own use case with Hyperledger technology, uh, feel free to submit it. It is open for anyone to participate and contribute to as well. Uh, another um, data point that I think is really important, just recently Block Data, they're a research firm, just uh, put out a report around the top 100 institutions of the world's largest companies. Um, and out of, out, of them 30, uh, out of the 30 technologies that they benchmarked or they looked at, Hyperledger Fabric was the most preferred um, of the top 100. So 26% of them um, are currently using Hyperledger Fabric, as you can see here, uh, which is just fantastic to see. And, and there are some Hyperledger Bezu in here in Ethereum. Um, we'll, we're going to get them to uh, start breaking those out correctly as well. But this is just a testament to our community. It's a testament to many of you on the phone who support these large implementations. Um, and it's just fantastic to see, you know, Fabric and other uh, our other uh, projects as well. Community growth. Uh, without uh, all of you on the phone, we couldn't be where we are today in our sixth year. Um, the three years that the Indian chapter has contributed has been amazing. Um, I'm always, uh, we always use it as an example. I'll just give you a, a, a story. Uh, yesterday, we had our annual governing board meeting um, in New York City. We met at the JP Morgan offices. Um, all our uh, governing board members, uh, including Joe Lubin and Christine Moy and David Treat. So Joe Lubin with the consensus, Christine Moy with uh, JP Morgan, Rakesh from um, IBM, uh, Archana uh, Shritsi from Walmart, who is the general member representative. We all and a bunch of others met um, in New York City for five and a half hours. Um, and uh, we highlighted the work that the Indian community um, has been doing to our governing board. Um, and I think it's important to, to, to acknowledge that to you all because um, you're all volunteers um, and it's just amazing. So once again, I wanna thank everybody here uh, for your support in that uh, as we do. And we continue to model what you've been doing here in India for the last three years across the globe as well, um, have a lot of successes in Latin America and Brazil, uh, which is fantastic to see. Another thing I want to just highlight, we are a global community. We have invested a lot of time and effort over the last year in making sure that Hyperledger is accessible in multiple languages for multiple regions. Uh, we now host meetups in 13 different languages. Um, we've translated the fabric documentation in eight languages, including Tamil. So thank you if any of you on the phone today um, were part of that contribution campaign. That was great to see. Um, we have translated the homepage. Um, we have different courses in different languages. And it's really just part of our growing focus on our regional communities as well. 
And last but not least, um, we continue to grow a commercial ecosystem. Uh, many of you here on the phone are part of that commercial ecosystem as members in the vendor directory, um, as her, uh, certified service providers. Um, that program continues to grow. Um, we have seen uh, RFP that specifically stated that they were looking for hyperledger certified certified service providers. So the program continues to um, be an important one. Um, and mostly, you know, don't you, we tell end user companies, they don't have to go alone, it alone. They have a rich commercial ecosystem of people like you uh, to support them. So how can you help further? You can join us, you contribute, you can share. So, you know, obviously you're joining the regional chapter. There's community calls. There are, there have been some recent discussions around having those community calls also have regional time, especially the special interest groups. So I'd love to continue in those discussions and see how we can support, um, contribute to a project or a lab. As I mentioned before, the labs are a great place uh, to start bringing uh, code and innovation. We're happy to provide that. <laughs> Write a blog or a developer showcase. Uh, we're always looking to highlight developers in the ecosystem. So uh, please, you know, join us for that as well. And last, I think that's the last one. I want to congratulate um, the two members of the, the technical steering committee, um, Arun as uh, going into a second year and has been an amazing leader for the technical steering committee and bringing the voice of the Indian community into the technical steering committee and Kamlesh, welcome and congratulations as well um, as uh, the new technical steering committee member to, uh, uh, and both of your leaders in the India regional chapter as well. So once again, congratulations. Um, it is uh, my, 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 my delight to be here today um, supporting um, our Indian chapter. And um, I honestly cannot wait to have an opportunity to get on a plane and go to India. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. That was a great, uh, great uh, presentation there. And thank you. We have now probably 10 minutes of uh, a Q and A. So uh, maybe I'll ask the first question, right? So um, what does it feel to like to be to be the executive director, right? We're all very excited for you to be the new executive director, but what does it feel like uh, to take on this new responsibility? Obviously, I think many ways you were doing a lot of, lot of uh, Hyperledger anyway, right? But right. what does it feel? What's your last month been like? Um, there hasn't been a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you, we made the announcement on October 13th, yeah. actually. So um, exactly uh, a month ago uh, when Brian Bellendorf uh, announced that he was going to be the executive director of the new um, 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 open source strategy uh, pro um, project at the Linux Foundation for security. Um, and uh, we had been working on that transition for a while. So it wasn't like he, he woke up this morning and you know, on October 13th and said, hey, this is, you know, would you like this job? Um, so we did a lot of valuations. Uh, we really made sure um, we, you know, discussed this with the board. Um, I, I've had full board support from the start, which has been fantastic to see. Um, I've been working with the board for the last four years very directly. So obviously they knew me. Um, our Hyperledger members know me quite well because I've been you know, working with them so, so, so long. And hopefully many of you do as well. I've tried to be as public as, as possible. So uh, it feels amazing. Um, it is um, one of the things you know, e that um, I, I was kind of, you know, just like anybody you know, who's, who, who's about to get promoted, like I, I had some apprehensions about it. And I went and I had a conversation with Jim Zemlin, who is the, you know, the executive director or the CEO of the Linux Foundation. And I said, Jim, I'm nervous, you know, can I do this? Can, do you think I could do this? And he said, absolutely. Dingala, you've been doing it for the last four years um, and you deserve, um, you deserve the recognition. Um, so it's been fantastic. You know, we're growing the team. It's important to grow the team. Um, we're going to bring bringing in some new resources and new faces um, to help support our member community and our global community. So over the next few weeks, you'll start hearing about those new faces. Um, we also just promoted David Boswell, who had been on my ecosystems team, and we just support um, promoted him to senior director of community architecture to really help grow uh, a lot of the developer community aspects. So it's been fantastic. It's been very tiring. I need a vacation. 
question. Um, and I do hope to get one over the Thanksgiving US uh, holidays here. Um, but you know, Julian, you know, you, Dorothy, and the rest of the staff there in Asia Pacific have just been so supportive. So I want to thank you. I couldn't have done it without you and the rest of the team. Um, so it feels great. It feels great. And um, I'm really looking forward to making us all uh, proud and you know continue to grow. Yeah, well, that's great. And I think that the whole community here, right, is really supportive, right, and very excited. But what you call the next chapter, I think it, it's, 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 a, it, 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 it's wonderful. So we've actually just got maybe just five minutes left. So I'm going to ask two different questions, right? Yeah. One is basically, we have a lot of people here saying, how do, I, how do I get involved? How do I find out more about Hyperledger? So that's kind of one question. And the second mm -hmm. question is, there's so many new things happening. We've got NFTs, we've got uh, CBDCs, we've got... Public networks. So those two kind of questions. How do we get involved? Literally, if we do this in five minutes, how, how, do, we, how do we get involved? And, and how, what do you see as the, as the kind of new exciting things? And, and how do we, as Hyperledger, engage in those? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, and I see a couple of questions that are, um, you know, like how. Uh, so how to get involved. So if you want to learn about hyperledger technologies, right, if you're at that stage where you don't have the technical knowledge or even the business knowledge about enterprise blockchain, we have great courses that are free and online and self-paced for you to take advantage of. Um, our uh, 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 introduction to hyperledger um, course uh, has I think over 175,000 uh, people have taken that course worldwide. We just updated it three months ago. So it's very, it's up to date um, about all our projects and kind of where the industry is. So I recommend that. Um, and then start dealing in. There's, there's courses around Hyperledger Fabric to learn, to get certification, to be a, a fabric developer or an administrator. Um, there's Hyperledger Indie, Aries, and Ursa to learn about digital identity. Um, there's Hyperledger Besu. So we just released in June, a uh, Hyperledger Bezu training course. Um, those are you know, free and available for anybody to take. The certification courses do require, uh, there's a fee associated with the testing, um, but there's lots of resources there. Uh, to get involved, um, there are a lot of videos. The YouTube library, if you haven't visited the YouTube library, and Dorothy, maybe you can pop it into the chat room, um, is a fantastic place to hear what other community members are building using Hyperledger. So I recommend doing that. All our special interest groups get uh, presentations presented there um, to do that. Um, continue being involved in the Hyperledger Indian chapter um, and, um, you know, and build, 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 <laughs> you know, grab the code and build some some solutions and you know show us what you have excellent and obviously yeah, the community here we've had for three years has, has done amazing mm -hmm. jobs and, and can help and support reach out to run cam lesh and vikram and, and everyone else uh, here sure. and many people and then uh, let me answer the the public blockchain question right okay. so one of the key things i think we all need as a community is to to focus on our enterprise blockchain use cases um but it will you know it, we're six years into this the public blockchain and the different public not, uh, blockchain networks will be important. So if you think about Ethereum, um, Hyperledger Bezu, and we've had access to the Ethereum virtual machine since uh, Burrow came into uh, Hyperledger, but Hyperledger Bezu is the Ethereum client that uh, can either be run as a permissioned network or as a node on the Ethereum mainnet. You're going to hear over the next few weeks, many new use cases and announcements around companies that want to build using Hyperledger technology and want the optionality, maybe not now, but in the future, the optionality to be able to be on the Ethereum mainnet. If you think about others in our ecosystem, uh, for example, Hedera, Hedera is a member of Hyperledger. They have a plugin for Hyperledger Fabric that allows Hyperledger Fabric networks to communicate with the Hedera public network. Um, we have obviously Indy is a permissionless network and there's a, a few permissionless networks that have been built using Hyperledger Indy. Um, we have companies like Quant, for example, um, who are building solutions for easy uh, access for enterprise implementations. Uh, they recently just did a presentation with Oracle blockchain um, on how they're doing tokenization using uh, quant. So there's a lot of experimentation and a lot of opportunity for enterprises to experiment with public uh, blockchains. Um, and I do think there'll be more 
Um, even in, um, for example, the lab called the Hyperledger UE, um, and they're doing IBC, which is um, they're doing uh, the connections into Cosmos. Um, and then Cactus themselves is doing Substrate, which is polka dot. So there's connections, there will be optionality and hybrid um, tools and solutions um, out there. And I think Hyperledger is well permission, uh, um, positioned to be a leader in that space as well. How do we bridge enterprises um, into public networks? Okay, thank you, Daniel. There is so much. <laughs> I'll, come very, very... I'll come back. I'll come back. It's very exciting. I think we've come to the point now. We have to hand over to the uh, um, to the interns. We're going to go through some presentations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a um, uh, then we have a networking, which I think we're going to be around for, so people can still ask uh, Daniela and myself some questions. Uh, so I'm going to hand now back to Arun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, uh, Daniela, for the great presentation. And thanks for the Q&A. I know we have so many questions coming in on the chat and we'll continue to answer them. But I guess now it's the time for us to um, um, switch over to our next presentation. So we have Pritam, uh, who is one of our Hyperledger um, uh, mentee. So as many of you know, Hyperledger runs an annual uh, mentorship project. And we are very glad to have so many representation from Indian region, especially the uh, amount of work or the uh, quality of work that they have been putting into, into into the open source community, it's really commendable. So without much ado, I would welcome uh, Pritam. Uh, hi. So hey, I'll share my screen. Uh, okay. Uh, please let me know, is it visible? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so. Uh, for the past uh, little bit about my introduction, I'm Pritam uh, from a small town in Gopalgaj, India. And I am currently doing my final year from uh, IIT Patna. For the past six months, I have been uh, doing the part-time intern internship with Hyperledger Mentorship under the men uh, mentorship of SAI from uh, Carbon Action. Um, a SIG group and Peter from Cactus and Kamlesh from our India chapter. Uh, so a little bit about the project, uh, the involved project work. The first was the carbon accounting project. Uh, this was a part, this is a part of a carbon action a SIG project. Uh, it basically contains the two components. First is utility emission channel. Uh, it is a, a a permission hyperledger fabric channel which contains the audited emission record of customer electricity data and then other component is uh, emission token network and this is a ethereum smart contract uh, which converts the emission data present on utility emission channel into a tradable emission token and the second uh, and the hyperledger cactus is a decentralized Integrate integration tool which allow us to in, integrate multiple blockchain. And for the mentorship, uh, I use the I use tech TypeScript, Node.js, Express, Docker, and and Volt. And so uh, these were the initial ob objective of the project. The first was to have carbon accounting uh, project to use uh, Hyperledger Cactus. And the second objective was the private key of the of the client should be properly managed with the HashiCorp Vault. And the last component uh, component objective was to prevent the double minting of emission token and the problem that was there in the existing code base. And so with that, uh, there was also a four deliverables and the first was to replace all the direct dependency of the carbon emission application from uh, fabric node SDK and ether to cactus packages. And the second was to have a implementation so that the fa fabric transaction could be signed by a private key stored in a vault server. And the third was to prevent the double spending problem. And the last was uh, design a, a vault identity management for the uh, for the carbon accounting application. 
so for the first uh, for uh, i have created uh, for each deliverables i have created i have committed to several uh, hyperledger projects uh, the first was uh, this was the initial pr to the carbon accounting and the second was to have a uh, have a mechanism so that um, the client's private key is securely managed so now um, most of the developer what we do is like uh, whenever we want to sign a fabric transaction we first fetch the private key onto the server and then sign the transaction and then send it to the fabric network so now the the mine approach was to have rather than fetching the a private key why don't we send the uh, message payload that needs to be signed and then the signature can be sent to the fabric this way the private key of the client will will always be stored in a vault server so there you have a vault server a certificate data stored stored that will only contain a certificate of the client and not the private component so you can see that um, in the credential component uh, part we have only certificate not the uh, private part so this was a better better way uh, than the simple simply putting the certificate and private key together so for that um, i commit i implemented this logic into the cactus as well as carbon accounting pr project and the third third uh, objective was to prevent a double minting problem so since uh, we have two um, blockchain involved first fabric and ethereum and and one of the logic was there to have a uh, token minted corresponding to a data stored in a fabric network so this 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 led to the double minting problem so and you can see like uh, we first get a valid uh, data from the fabric network and then corresponding to those fabric data we mint a token and during this whole process uh, there was a problem of double minting so with uh, this pr i solved the double minting problem and about the project execution and accomplishment um, the uh, the the most uh, the component on which i am most proud of is the proposal and implementation of identity component of with uh, volt uh, volt server and the most challenging part uh, during my mentorship was to have to understand the cactus integration because it it involves a lot of packages and it has a lot of moving parts and third and the second was the uh, understanding of the hashicorp volt so and uh, there was a, uh, i i completed all the um, deliverables but uh, there was some uh, future works that needs to be done and uh, first were was that uh, to design and implement the uh, same kind of me mechanism like for fabric signing the transaction with volt server for ethereum that way um, the ethereum private key and the fabric private key both will be secured and the second is uh, build a ui uh, which will use the api server that i built so uh, after uh, my mentorship uh, completion uh, these were the output that i was able to come uh, there was a one carbon accounting api server which is now in which is now ready for production uh, deployment and uh, it, it i have also added a lot of test case so that it can be maintainable uh, and other other developer can also contribute to it and there is uh, with the old identity component the private key management is more secured and the last is the uh, double minting problem was also prevented with the with my implementation of data lock chain, chain code and during the mentorship uh, the insight that i gained was i learned 
I learned the workflow of a community driven project like of Cactus and the carbon accounting projects and working with peer developer from across the world. And the advice that I want to give for other new developer and the new mentee was, is to, to design and plan before jumping into code because this was a most crucial and part and it helped me a lot. And the set a daily or weekly target so that you do not get lost and document the daily progress, which is, and, and the men, mentors and the community member are there for, uh, they're always to, always to help you. Yeah, thank you. And any question? That's awesome. Yeah, Pritam, this is this is awesome, and you know your collaboration with Peter and the rest of the team there is just it's great to see. Um, and I, I know Arun is putting some some notes on on the chat as well. The mentorship program at here at Hyperledger is you know critical um, for a lot of core you know projects. So um, you know we're, we, next year we'll do the same batch of of mentorships. Um, but folks like Pritam, really thank you so much for for your contributions. I think it's uh, hopefully you had a good experience. Sounds like you had a great experience and you know create was able to move some of those. Um, those initiatives forward that the Cactus team was looking for. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, and I guess Pritam, there are questions on, uh, the questions asking about sharing the links that you have worked on, on the chat, probably you can share those. And thanks again, uh -huh. Pritam, and we know you have a busy schedule today and all the best for your examinations. Yeah, and thank you. Do well, and we look forward to having great collaboration in future with you, and also many more contributions from you within Apple Ledger. And um, now we will switch over to Harsh, who is another um, Apple Ledger mentee from the India region. And Harsh, uh, this stage is set for you. Sure, thanks, Arun. Hi guys, uh, I would just present my screen. So, is my screen visible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am Harsh Multani, working as a blockchain developer at Anworks. And my major tech stack is Indie, Aries, Ursa and Fabric. So, uh, I was involved with the Hyperledger community from 2019. I've been working in Fabric from 2019, started with sample POCs and then shifted to Anworks and started working on production projects. There I got to know about the Hyperledger India chapter calls and started attending that. And when I was uh, involved in this calls, then I got to know about various initiatives that Hyperledger India chapter carries like carries out like Hyper Hack 2021 they did. Then I got to know about the Hyperledger mentorship projects. Uh, as you all know that there are various projects under Hyperledger. There are around 16 Hyperledger projects. And whenever uh, the use case that I have seen in these mentorship projects are whenever these 16 projects are being used by businesses, they always uh, like uh, there are, uh, they operate a, operate globally and they operate around different parts of the world so every time there is some or the other new opinion that comes out which leads to a feature being implemented so these 22 projects are similar like uh, it uh, there are uh, these are features that we are implement that hyperledger has uh, seen and they wanted to be implemented on different projects like fabric iroha burrow cactus caliper and aries stack so what my like what I got to know about this is like whenever these projects are being used by different businesses, they they would always come up with some or the other different opinion that would lead to you know new feature being implemented. So similarly, then uh, I was implementing a project on Hyperledger Fabric and Aries integration to support Fabric as a blockchain ledger. Uh, a little bit about this project. 
uh, as we all know that fabric is the most used blockchain platform till now uh, as we just saw the insights from block data and what they needed is suppose uh, now i am build, now a business is building a uh, supply chain management solution using fabric now what they need is now if they need to verify some or the other identity in that blockchain they don't want to keep uh, the identity related metadata on a separate ledger which would be ind in our case uh, so the business bil building the supply chain management solution they don't want that our supply chain related data should be on fabric and the identity related data if we need to verify some identity that should be in ind so they wanted that uh, they wanted that the same data should be the both both data like supply chain management data and identity related metadata like credential definition or schema transactions should be there in fabric only uh, this was the this this way the this way this project arised which involved supporting fabric as a blockchain ledger from aries so now aries only supports indi as a blockchain ledger but after this need uh, there was a support to add fabric also as a blockchain ledger so uh, basically what we did here was in indi there are three types of transactions that goes to the ledger domain transactions pool transactions and config transactions the pool and config transactions that goes to the indi ledger are related to the indi network setup so we don't need to do that at fabric because fabric there are different transactions that would be that would play the role similar to what role is being played by the pool and config transactions in indi ledger we only needed to support the six domain transactions that uh, indi supports those six transactions that indi supports are the did transaction attrib transaction schema transaction credential definition revocation registry entry and revocation registry definition uh, i would give you a bit about these uh, six transactions uh, did is a identity of an issuer that that is registered to the ledger it is registered with the public key of the issuer so in a did transaction a did document goes to the ledger which includes the id that is the did the public key that is where key and the endpoint of the issuer agent or any agent for that matter then there are schema transaction that goes to the ledger now say suppose uh, i am an issuer is issuing a credential an identity credential wherein the attributes are name and age so the schema would contain these attributes name and age so this goes to this is goes to the ledger from the issuer agent then there is credential definition transaction uh, credential definition uh, basically includes the public keys of the issuer the private keys of uh, that correspond to these public keys are in the issuer's wallet which are used during signing and the public keys that go goes to the credential definition that goes in the credential definition to the ledger are used during the verification process now uh, like stop me if you have any questions in between them the fourth transaction that is uh, just trans one uh, just yes. one hush uh, i was wondering just in case you know uh, you are showing a ppt we are looking at uh, chrome yes, right yes yes uh, okay uh, great great yeah. sorry sorry to interrupt that yeah okay uh, i have a presentation lined up maybe on 20th and 27th that time i would give a proper demo and a ppt no no thank you. sorry for it yeah so the fourth transaction that i was mentioning about is attrib transaction so here the and basically attrib transaction is the transaction which updates the did document that already went to the indi ledger the main update that happens here is the endpoint gets updated of the agent then there is revocation registry entry transaction here the here there is one accumulator that goes to the indi ledger which is used when 
a user is creating a proof to check whether a particular credential has been revoked or not the revocation registry entry along with the revocation registry definition transaction is used by the user uh, uh, so that he can make a proof of, of a particular credential if if the credential is not revoked the entry transaction includes the accumulator and the definition transaction includes the wit witness delta i would explain the whole process uh, uh, maybe in a uh, in the upcoming demos and so these are the six transaction that goes to the indi ledger so what we did here was we uh, set up a fabric network and we we uh, like instead of these transaction going going to the indi ledger we directed it so that it goes to the fabric ledger so we didn't do any changes in the payload say because uh, we wanted it, we took the same payload that indi modules generate and uh, we send it that send that to the fabric ledger because if in future some changes happens to the indi module or those payloads we won't need to do any changes such that it also supports fabric so uh, the need uh, won't be there and if in future some changes happens to indi module it would be it would work with fabric also uh, the thing that i learned uh, that my learnings from here was basically on fabric networks speci specifically docker docker networks and how hyperledger fa fabric is set up on your system and on cloud and uh, i got to know i got to read about, a lot about i read the fabric uh, documentation and got to know about how the fabric network operates we have some future plans for this project in future we may or may not include support for other ledger based on the based on the need if, if the business needs we may we can easily integrate support for sorto or any other ledger for that matter and one more plan that we have for this project is integrating the indi wallet with fabric wallet such that both credentials related to fabric uh, identity credentials and uh, indi identity indi credential records schema records are kept at the same place arsh a question so yeah. currently at the end of this in your architecture today you have both hyperledger indi and hyperledger fabric is hyperledger indi is helping you manage the identity and hyperledger fabric is helping you manage the business transactions Uh, come again what you what you are saying the no question was do you have now in your architecture you have both hyperledger indi as well as hyperledger fabric is yeah in my architecture, in my architecture as in uh, we are integrating uh, the fabric support in aries framework javascript it is and once mm -hmm. that is done the aries framework javascript would be able to support indi and fabric both as a ledger so we can define which we want to use uh, the business that would develop the solutions ssi solutions using afj they they can decide whether they want to use indi or they want to use fabric got it so basically if i understand this right so today with the solution that you have developed i can use hyperledger fabric for both decentralized identity and decentralized business transaction both yes yes sure this, this was right. the main need of the project because businesses as like fabric today is being used in major shipping supply chains textile supply chains then in cbdc projects and then in telecom projects so the, these businesses wanted to implement the identity verification workflows mainly the self sovereign identity they wanted to implement so we wanted we added that support in afj for now that would support fabric and indi as well fabric as well as for now thank you any more questions hey hi rish this is sudan so you said like uh, you deploy this application in cloud which cloud provider you are using 
we we are we have not uh, yet deployed it on cloud we are uh, like we are first uh, we would first demo it on local and okay. that if that works we would move it to cloud we would test it with cloud if okay which is preferable i mean uh... Uh, whether AWS or GCP. Uh, I have like uh, I have when when I was working in my company project, uh, we mm-hmm. are using we are using AWS there. Okay. So I basically uh, use AWS. Yes. Thank thanks, Arish. And and hey, Sudan, I believe yes. uh, the preferred cloud service provider would be when we deploy these projects. And um, probably what Harsh wanted to say is the Menti project would enable support uh, for a cloud deployment. Okay. Okay. So uh, thanks, Harsh. I guess uh, now we uh, have now reached a time of for networking and also celebrating uh, the third anniversary uh, for India chapters. And. We definitely would like to thank um, all of you who have been supporting us for the last three years and in, in growing the community, right? So we couldn't have been here uh, without your support or continued support in terms of any contribution that you have been putting in, in, in right? Uh, not just the code contribution. So our type of ledger, we have any type of contributions uh, that you can possibly uh, put in, like you can possibly think of you can participate in terms of improving the documentation. You can participate in reaching out to additional, uh, like spreading the word about Hyperledger project, or you can even participate in the special interest group if you are a subject matter expert. You could always participate in working groups in, in, in which are time bound and which are specialized in certain areas to work on. And you can always contribute to projects that eventually you will end up using, right? And um, yeah, there's a lot more. So I would probably uh, welcome Julian to speak a little bit more about that. And then we will jump on to networking session. So you want me to talk a little about how people get involved or get involved in projects? Yes. And also Julian, if you can um, um, bring out uh, the contributions done from India chapter, like starting from the first um, lead right like the way Amol get, got it all started and right. I remember you traveled to Bangalore uh, three years ago right so you, if, if you can share some right. memories about that that would be great wow. all right so I'm going to dig out of my memory a lot's happened in those three years my goodness <laughs> what a journey I mean, this has been amazing I've been I've been since since uh, I think five six years now right uh, and uh, we ha- we started off, we had a technical working group uh, in, in China. And I think it was three, four years ago, we had this discussion, actually Brian and uh, uh, and David Boswell and a few others were saying, how do we how do we expand to help these communities globally, right? Uh, and uh, uh, we came, I, I met up with, um, uh, with the technical steering chair at the time there. Uh, and I also met up with Amor. I think we met in Switzerland, was it Amor? I think it was right. It was in Switzerland. That's why you got those mountains in the background. I didn't mm-hmm. think that's not Bangalore, right? Uh, <laughs> so we met up there in, in Bangalore, and we thought about we planned this right as a new and decided rather than having a technical steering committee, you want to have a broader remit, right? Um, and uh, they came up with that with with the concept of a chapter and a more really. You took that forward. Uh, we took that to the technical steering committee. It got passed, and um, the rest is history. I think. Um, all, yeah, you it, it, that? it was launched during <laughs> Brian's visit to Bangalore. It was, exactly. Um, we had a lot of the industry leaders uh, here, uh, and uh, that's when we formally floated the idea, and uh, we kick-started that. Um, started off with, uh, with a very small uh, initial meeting, and uh, look how it's grown. And it's really a testament to the community and to... Uh, folks like Arun and Kamlesh and Vikram and Rajesh and all the others who've contributed so much towards uh, towards this uh, this community uh, in the last three years. And of course, uh, a lot of support coming from Hyperledger itself, uh, from Julian and and David and uh, and Brian. Okay, I have to thank you, Amol, because you really did. You took on you took on it. It was a it was a new journey, and it was a new 
a new construct which we put together, right? And I think it's Hyperledger is one of the first uh, kind of big Linux foundation projects that's done these local, uh, kind of local, because uh, um, in the end, think local, act global. It all makes sense, right? That's how you scale and that's how you get deep uh, community. Uh, and we've had, uh, you know, in terms of projects, in terms of translation, we've had uh, uh, some of the, some translation here to, uh, uh, to, to some, some of the local dialects in, in, in India. Uh, and uh, we've done many, many, many projects and it has grown and grown and grown. And then, as you say, you then handed over the mantle uh, to Arun and Kamlesh. Uh, and we've had a university chapter. We've had all kinds of uh, interesting kind of subgroups. We're very active on LinkedIn. Uh, we have I said, weekly meetings, which everyone is welcome to, right? Uh, we have a lot of mentors, mentees, uh, people are maintaining projects in India, and I think that's grown and grown as well. So uh, I think it's been a, a very, very successful. And obviously, as a, uh, a, a and, and obviously with Kamlesh and Arun, they're also a, a, a bridge to that technical steering committee. Um, and one of the reasons we really set it up is one, obviously, India, one of the you know, prolific developer communities in the world, one of the largest, right, and, and great expertise, right, um, is time zones. So uh, a lot of these meetings, as I think Arun was saying, we're going to have the, the mentee stuff, but it's going to be late, right? So what can we do in this time zone uh, to get more people, uh, more, more people uh, involved? Uh, and uh, you know, it's great. It's great. And I don't, would, would Kamlesh, you'd like to say anything as well? So Kamlesh is, is, is I can see Kamlesh now on camera, right? You're in a yeah, car. So, I love the Zoom world. Yeah, We're like, anywhere. So, and actually, I was driving, so the camera was off. So, actually, I stopped at the highway. So, I want to say some words. So, uh, I think uh, I associated with the India chapter from last three years when you started with Amol and Ajay. Mm -hmm. Lots of people to, to the community in the global front. And then um, uh, we, Arun, uh, myself and lots of other uh, volunteers started contributing and helping community to build uh, in a good presence. And then I uh, especially thank to the Julian, Dorothy and the brand especially uh, coming to the India chapter events and make the India chapter is a kind of, uh, of the successful in chapter, regional chapter. So yeah, thanks to you and uh, everyone and welcome Daniela and we are looking for the similar kind of contributions and help to build a more stronger community in India. Uh, excellent. And, and, and say hello to your child there. We can hear your child in the background. It's kind of a family. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's excellent. Excellent. So yeah, we have a great community activity. And I think the platform, we keep them raising the, 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 the threshold of activity, right? So, um, so, so thank you, uh, Kamlesh. And I think, Daniela, it's great to have you here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's been a great connection with Brian. I think we're going to have a greater connection with what, what, what you're going to be doing here. So uh, I think a celebration. What, what we like, are going to be doing here all yes. together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what we're going to be doing here together. So, uh, you know, it's all about people it's all about community right uh, what we do here at hyperledger and as we say everyone is welcome so the more people involved the more diversity in our community the stronger the community so uh, and the inner community has really really stepped up and actually i think lots of stuff that arun did uh, like we did the um, uh, or arun and kamlesh did in terms of the uh, uh, the hackathon right i think that was an initiative that had not been done before and you had i think someone from hong kong won it in the end right the first uh, the first hackathon just to show it's not just about india it's about also India supporting uh, uh, the community uh, in, uh, around the world, right? So uh, uh, it's been an amazing, an amazing journey, and uh, we look to continue. It, does anyone else want to 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 reach out? Anybody else um, who uh, has? I know Vikram, you've been involved a lot as well, and others. And anybody else want to say anything? Or we can go into the um, we can go into the uh, um, uh, the into into the Net network. networking. Yeah. And we've got some people yeah, like you know, from, sorry, Vikram, yeah. Yes, sorry, Julian. Yeah, I think, you know, definitely, you know, I would definitely like to say that, you know, uh, I have been associated with, you know, India chapter for about last two years. And I think, you know, the hackathon was the one which got me initiated with this chapter. And, you know, I have been since, you know, with this chapter since then. And, you know, we have seen this community grow. And, you know, along with Hyperledger, we have seen, you know, Hyperledger grow a lot. And similarly, you know, Hyperledger India chapter grew a lot. 
and you know it is a great place for anyone you know uh, who are today on call to you know so uh, to join our you know uh, it, it would be great you know if you join our you know weekly calls on thursday and you know so we discuss what is happening with hyperledger and you know uh, what is happening with the community around and also you know uh, we have used that opportunity to help people who are struggling with hyperledger fabric or maybe even you know with their technical issues or you know their technical questions so i think you know it gives a holistic uh, i guess you know uh, support to that community so you know and you know community is as strong as you know the community members i would say so yeah no, that, that's that's great and i don't chigo do you want to say anything about from chain yard one of our members also chigo has been involved a lot i'm just picking people out randomly it's very cruel <laughs> Hey Julian, thank you very much. Uh, you. I appreciate your you are you are calling my name and remembering me. Yes, Chainyard has been very active in uh, uh, in the uh, in overall marketplace as well as as a one of the very first uh, hyperledger certified service provider. We have a office out of Hyderabad uh, in India. I mean, I've been working with uh, Aruna Namula. Uh, I think I, I think the, your, your first visit to Intel, I, I still recall you and Brian and uh, meeting as Amula and everybody. So uh, uh, I, I think there's a lot more we can do. Um, we, we, I'm sure about that, but a lot we have done. Um, I think going to have a very, you know, three years is a time to set the baseline. And, uh, and there is, from that, you know, we can use as a, uh, you know, jump, a starting board. So I appreciate that. Thank you. That's excellent. I'll stop picking people out now. <laughs> so you can all relax. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I think for new people here, uh, who, who are not involved, reach out to anybody. I think everyone is very supportive to help people uh, make that connection into the community. Uh, so we're all here, here together on a common purpose to you know, help the community advance blockchain and work, you know, and, and help the Indian community and the global community. So I'm going to hand you back that to Arun now. I think we're going to do some networking and some fun stuff, right? Awesome. And, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, uh, Daniela. And thank you, all the uh, mentees, Preetam and uh, yes. Harsh and all the other mentees who are going to come and speak to us in the coming weeks. So I'm going to stop recording. We'll venture into networking session. Um, it's going to be open for everyone where we can all uh, join in in random uh, breakout rooms and speak about um, all the things, right? So how to get involved in the community. We'll also have uh, volunteers or moderators in each of those breakout rooms just to guide you around if you are stuck somewhere. Um, and also coming uh, next week on 20th, we have uh, great presentations lined up, or actually a panel uh, by uh, Gijo and and, uh, and also um, like there, there are too many great events to look out for, including we are going to have a blockchain in agri-tech space. We are going to speak about blockchain and tokenization space. We are going to speak about blockchain in healthcare. So um, there's so much to learn over the course of next three weeks. And we look forward to having similar participation from you in the coming weeks. So I'm going to stop recording now and we'll jump into networking session.